driving statistics are particularly. Sorry, all I've got is a 180. Can you hold the car? Which one's got the camera? Where's the blue sedan? This is our driver education simulator room. Right. It represents one phase of our driver education program. Uh, the behind the wheel phase, which is four hours, and the simulator phase, which is 12 hours, and then we have a classroom phase, which is 30 hours. The youngsters sit in that seat that you're sitting, and they attempt to drive the car. It has an exact duplication of everything that occurs in a car, brakes, accelerator pedal, mm -hmm. Uh, gear shift lever and so forth. So we try to make it as real as possible. We show them a series of films through a console that will be up on the screen and they react on skills and every skill that we can possibly put into it. And the instructor in the rear will have a readout of what they do individually or as a group. And he can also have a printout so that he can keep it for later on or for testing, whatever it might be. Um, we feel that uh, an item like this, a simulator, really depicts everything in a normal situation. And the whole objective is to teach the youngsters something to do uh, realistically in a practical situation out on the road, but without danger of uh, an injury or an accident. We're very happy and we're pleased that a new unit that we uh, have in this particular car and this car is an analyzer. And the analyzer will be able to detect or illustrate stopping distances on different surfaces, a wet surface or a dry surface or a hill or on ice or snow. But the most important thing is that we'd be able to also illustrate the stopping distance while a person might be under the influence of alcohol. And this is what we are really pleased about. Um, we, uh, if I can maybe try to illustrate, up here there is a uh, panel and it says normal and driver. What we will do is there will be flashing lights, uh, red, white, and green. And at a particular time, all the lights go out except the red lights. In that instant, the student will take his foot off the accelerator, put it on the brake. And that is the reaction time distance. Normally, it's about 3 quarters of a second. And uh, a car will travel about 60 feet at 55 miles per hour. As he, he presses the brake, the car will travel now another distance until the car stops, and that's the braking distance. The two of them put together is total stopping distance. Now, he will get a reading up here, and that will be approximately 250 some odd feet. Well, now, when that happens, is this, is this supposed to be an emergency for really slamming on yes, the brakes? Yes, slamming on the brakes, Mr. President. Then the instructor will put it back in again, and he will uh, simulate that he now has a uh, a certain amount of alcohol, for instance, uh, 0.15, and he will ask the student to again make an emergency stop. And another reading will come up here, and that will show maybe a distance of 1,000 feet or, or 1,200 feet, and will graphically illustrate that stopping distance is increased tremendously with the ingestion of alcohol into the body. And we feel very, very good about the something like that because it works very well with this alcohol awareness program that we're conducting. We are the only school in the state of New Jersey that has this human in. Lights, please. But he's come here because of you. He's come here because of the job you have done. Delighted <laughs> with his endorsing myself of the 21 year old drinking age. And so I'd like to congratulate you. Everyone here at Riverdale High School, Mothers Against Drunk Driving, RID, and are still doing so much. Keep up the good work, our lives, and our children's lives. <laughs>
addressed the problem, and they formed the nucleus of the organization CARD, Committee Against Al uh, for Alcohol Awareness in the Riverdale Community. saying we need a rebirth of the American tradition of leadership at every level of government and in private life as well. The United States of America is concerned to deal with a great national problem and in doing this the movement against drinking and driving. This is community leadership and community involvement. So was the Boston Tea Party. So was the abolitionist movement. War since World War II. And the commission strongly urged federal action to require a 21-year-old drinking age. Now, I want to so full promise are not ended or perfect. So we know what the problem is. We know that society has a stake in solving it, and we know fatalities among 19 and 20-year-olds in the first year alone. Well, when you're talking about a 26 drinking age to 21, I was delighted and hopeful. I made speeches to support it. And there was momentum, fed in part by good in all, 23 states now have age 21 laws. But now it appears that things have slowly careen on home and get into trouble of all sorts, including auto accidents. Now this slaughter hurts us as a people. It tears up the fabric of society. <laughs> May your good work continue and just look at who you will be working for up here in these stands, these young people. Thank you very much. Stand by, stand by, stand 